right. Okay, everybody, welcome to the last uh, session of the night for the uh, for the lacrosse summit. Um, got Dylan Ward joining us from beautiful and balmy Denver right now. Uh, Dylan, thanks for being on here. Oh, did we just lose him? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh. Yeah, sorry, you were frozen there for a second. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Hopefully that's a blip in the radar. But um, quick, quick housekeeping. We want to thank our sponsors, uh, Major Series Lacrosse here in Ontario, uh, Uncommon Fit, Franklin Parr Real Estate Team, Sticks and Picks Podcast. Uh, thanks for Manitoba Lacrosse for stepping in, Apex Lacrosse Events, and Bear Paw Lacrosse Events, uh, which is a great new thing. Hopefully it spreads your way. Got a um, fellow from Indiana doing some box tournaments in the Midwest area. So, it's, uh, nice. Yeah, pretty interesting. Got a Six Nations uh, team traveling down for him each year. So, All right on. Yeah. So without further ado, we've got uh, Dylan Ward from the Colorado Mammoth, Team Canada, Chaos Lacrosse, and Denver East High School head coach, I believe. Yep. Nice, nice. Um, Dylan, you're going to take us through a kind of a walkthrough, uh, um, translatable skills and concepts and, and items for box to field. Yeah, yeah. So uh, excited to uh, to do this tonight. Um, like you said, going to talk about uh, the translatable skills between the the box game and the field game. I'm also going to touch on um, some equipment stuff, uh, especially for those of you who may not be super familiar with the the box game in terms of uh, goaltending. Um, you know, it's something that I deal with on a weekly basis, or you know, every time I'm coaching the youth kids down here, uh, you see kids who who have um, you know. A, piece of equipment or missing a piece of equipment that, that you know you you know you would need to to play box successfully and, and as safe as possible and then uh, at the end I'm just going to quickly touch on uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, box or uh, working with box goalies or working with first time box goalies um, just kind of helping them get as comfortable as possible uh, playing the box game when they're when they're coming over from the field game and uh, you know some tricks that I've used to, to help kids kind of get used to the, the, the box game. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just jump right into the, the presentation here. Okay, so while Dylan's gonna share the screen, I uh, just want everybody to know that um, at, the, at the bottom, there's a Q&A button. Um, if you could use that to throw that in there, we will get those questions on, uh, on to Dylan when, when time permits. All right, so uh, yeah, we'll just hop right into it. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the box equipment. And uh, the most important thing that I, and mistake that I see being made by um, new box goalies and programs that aren't super familiar with box is uh, wearing field goalie gloves for the box game. And you know, I think that's um, probably one of the, the most dangerous things that, that kids, uh, kids will do. Um, and that's not to take anything away from the, the field goalie gloves, um, but they're just not designed to take that kind of rapid impact that, um, or consistent impact that the box goalie gloves are, are designed for. So, you know, as you know, when they're, when kids are really young, you know, say five years old to maybe nine, 10 years old, yeah, they can get away from it or away with wearing field goalie gloves. But as soon as they start to hit that, uh, 11, 12 middle school age, uh, and kids can actually start to are growing into their bodies and shooting uh, significantly harder. That's when kids will get in trouble. And um, when they're wearing those field gloves, they'll get, you know, what we call stingers much more frequently. And then, you know, they're not designed to fit with uh, the box uppers. So, you know, kids will get um, hit in soft spots on the glove and then stung between their wrist and where the, the um, box upper body pad our arm guard um, uh, starts. So, you know, you really want to make sure that you are uh, equipping your, your young goaltenders well or properly. And uh, box goalie gloves are, I would say, essential in terms of, you know, why, uh, putting on goalies. And one thing that I've seen uh, here in Denver is kids who will be wearing field goalie gloves and they'll take a couple hard shots right off the bat and decide right then and there that they, they don't want to play box goalie anymore. So, you know, in, uh, in terms of trying not to discourage kids or, or want them to feel as safe as possible, you know, you want to wear those gloves. But um, something that you can get away with um, 
is oversized hockey gloves. You know, they've got more protection than uh, the field goalie gloves. Um, they're a little bit bigger. But again, if, if you can get your hands on the, the box goalie gloves specific for box across, I definitely would recommend uh, going that route. Um, in terms of helmet, you know, the field, field helmet uh, with a throat guard works well. Uh, I, used, I grew up using one basically all the way from Pee Wee through uh, my first two years in the NLL. Uh, and then I switched over to the hockey mask. Um, I think it just, you know, it's just a, a mask that's designed for to play goalie in. It's designed to take impact. So that's kind of the reasoning why I switched over. But, you know, obviously they're pricey. And um, if, if uh, you can't, don't, have, don't have access to a hockey mask or, you know, you can't get your hands on one, um, you know, the, the field uh, mask works just fine. Uh, for a stick, you know, I, I, I recommend getting a separate stick from field to use for box. And the reason for that is a, a lot of kids now, and myself included, are just using player shafts on their field goalie sticks. And um, it's just not reasonable for a, uh, a box goalie. So you want to make sure that you have a little bit of a longer shaft whether you're just using a straight up goalie shaft that's uncut or myself, I use a, a long pole that I cut down. So that just kind of, you know, gives you um, more reach when you're going for ground balls uh, around the crease, as well as, you know, anchoring that stick in the, in between your arm and your, your shoulder, basically your armpit pit area. If you're using that small shaft, it's really difficult to uh, anchor that stick and your stick will be uh, more susceptible to move around when it gets hit with impact or with impacted by the ball. Um, you know, the Jersey is, is something that's, that's big. Um, my, my personal preference, I don't like you, uh, not wearing a Jersey, you know, some goalies, uh, uh, don't mind it. You know, Doug Jamison with the New England Black Wolves, he'll, uh, he'll practice without wearing a Jersey, but myself, I just, uh, I just don't feel comfortable in that without that Jersey on. So you're going to want to get your hands on one of those. Um, and then the best way to, to access equipment, uh, if for reasonable prices, is actually a Facebook group that um, you know many of the NLL goalies are part of. There's a, a huge um, number of Canadian goalies, American goalies. I think there's an international uh, contingent in there as well. It's the Box Across Goalies Universe on Facebook, and there's constantly people selling and um, you know reaching out to to find uh, box goalie equipment. So that's a great resource for you. Uh, I've seen every every piece of equipment on there from helmet to upper body gloves, leg pads, pants, literally everything. So that's a great resource for people who may not be on the budget to, to buy a brand new set of um, box goalie, uh, goalie equipment. That's a great resource for, for used equipment and pretty easy to piece together a full set um, in a pretty timely fashion. And then also the last thing that I'll touch on are the pants. And um, again, you know, the, the box goalie pants specific um, are obviously the best. But, uh, you know, for younger kids and someone trying it out for the first time, if you have access to hockey goalie pants, you know, those work great as well. So um, hockey goalie pants are, gonna, are a great alternative if you can't get your hands on the specific box goalie uh, pants. Um, all right, moving on. We'll, uh, we'll get into my first similarity, and that's the stance. And, um, you know, right off the bat, people may think that that um, isn't, entirely true just because in terms of right off by the eye test you know you've got your box goalie the the stick is down by its by your feet and you feel across your stick is obviously up by your by your ear but if you're to take away all of the equipment and all the the sticks and everything you're still in a um athletics position you know it's the same athletic stance that you're you're going to use when you're playing hockey or basketball volleyball you know whatever sport it is so the stance although um from the naked eye may appear quite different. You know, your feet are relatively in the, the same position. Your, your knees, you have a slight bend. You know, your shoulders are always facing towards the ball. Um, your head is, is up and you're on the balls of your feet. So it's that, you know, that standard athletic position that we, that we all hear about. And here I use a picture of uh, Christian Del Bianco for box. You know, again, it's, I think it's a great de depiction of, of that athletic stance. His feet are, are just a bit wider than shoulder width. You know, slight bend, he's got his hand out in front of him, or sorry, his offhand on his hip, but a little bit in front. You know, his shoulders are square to the ball, and uh, his eyes are dialed in. And then you go over to Kip Turner for the field across, and, you know, you, you strip away the equipment, and, and it looks very familiar, or very similar, sorry. 
Uh, his feet, again, are a little bit wider than shoulder width, slight bend in the knee. Uh, he's on the back or on the balls of his feet. Shoulders are square to the, to the ball, and uh, you can see his eyes are dialed in. So, you know, although it may not seem like it, um, the stances are very similar. The only real difference is, obviously, beside, equipment aside, is you have two hands on your stick and field lacrosse, it's up by your ear, and then in box you have one hand on your stick, it's down by your feet. That's really the only, only takeaway um, between the two. And then obviously in box you have your, your free hand as a, a blocker. Uh, moving into positioning, I've actually got a couple of videos. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just had a question shoot in. It was, uh, it was related back actually to the shafts. Uh, I'm yep. pretty sure it's this picture that's generating it too. But what, um, I mean, I don't know what's in the rules for goaltenders, uh, but how long should the shaft be relative to your height? That, that's actually a great question. And I've seen um, kids use all sorts of different uh, lengths. It really comes down to comfort. Um, I, I don't have a measurement for my shaft right off the bat. But, um, you know, I, I have a, my stick is around my shoulder. Um, and I'm 6'5". So I have my, my stick around my shoulder. And I think that's a pretty good measuring point. Just in terms of, you know, you don't want to have too long of a shaft where you, you aren't able to control the ball when it's in your stick. But you also want to have a stick long enough where um, you can reach those those long or those uh, farther out loose balls, and uh, and and still maintain positioning in your crease. So it really comes down to comfort. But I would say a good gauge would be uh, around shoulder height, with your shaft and your head. Okay, thanks. Yep. And then so for positioning again, I've got a couple of videos here and. Um, Again, obviously the box game and field at when to the naked eye looks a lot different, but you'll see in these clips, the positioning is very similar. You play in a very similar arc. Uh, I've got a couple of clips of myself. There's one of me from our game against the Colorado Mammoth game against the Buffalo Bandits this year. Um, and, and then I have a 2018 clip from my Team Canada against the USA in the round robin. And um, although I play different arcs, um, in box, I play a much higher arc, and I, I stand much higher to the top of the crease. It's still a similar arc in box than it is the field. You know, you're still um, uh, playing almost a five-point arc uh, with a couple extra steps here and there, but it, it is very similar. And that's one thing that I've been coaching quite a bit with my goalies right now is basically stripping down the position to it, its, its very basics and what we're looking for in a goalie. And that is when you're in your positioning, you know, you want to be, like I just touched on, you want to be square to the shooter and square to the ball. And you also want to hold your ground, right? You see a lot of times uh, goalies now, they'll, they'll move quite a bit and they'll never really be set. But you'll see in these two, two videos, um, as the play uh, progresses, I get into my stance and hold my position as long as possible before I have to move, right? So again, I'm getting square to the shooter. I'm holding my position. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't have what I consider happy feet and moving all over the place, right? I'm, I'm holding my ground, I'm getting set, and that puts me in the best position to, to make that, those saves. Um, and then when we, so we'll just go through that one more time, right? You'll see here, right? The shooter is, or the ball carrier, sorry, is, is continuing to move, but I'm holding my ground and not moving a ton so that I don't get off balance or off kilter and I don't um, uh, kill my positioning and get unsquared to the ball. Oh, sorry. Um, so I hold my ground there. And then as that ball moves, I react and then create a new base as well. So I'm hold, continuing to hold my ground and stay square. Right. And like I said, I play a much higher arc in the box game than I do in the field game. But the similarities um, in positioning are there. And then as we go over to the field game here, right, again, I play a little bit. I play a much lower arc, but the, the, the principles are the same. Oh. Right, so I'm holding my ground, trying to make as few movements as possible and allow myself to be in the best position to make those saves. Right, again, the, the field game is, is, I don't want to say a much slower game, but the possessions are longer and the ball doesn't swing east and west as much, so it's easier to kind of hold those positions, sorry. So again, I hold that position, even though he's coming across the top, right? I'm staying square to the shooter, like you saw again in the, in the box game. And I'm really trying to limit those movements. And like I said, with my goalies that I coach right now in the box game and the field game, 
I'm stripping things down and, and, and building from the bottom up in terms of, you know, holding our ground, limiting our movement, because even though, right, especially in the field game, you've got less equipment on in a bigger net, you know, you, you want to limit those movements as much as possible, because as you get older, you know, shooters become, become get better, more accurate, and have a harder velocity. The more you move, um, the, the less time you're going to have to react to shoot, uh, shots and shooters and uh, the, the less successful you're going to be. So although the net is bigger and you're wearing less and you're covering less, you want to also move less um, before the shot and, and be more set so that you give yourself the best opportunity to make that save. Much like the box game where you want to, you know, basically create yourself into to a wall, hold your ground, and, and uh, make the shooter shoot around you. The same principle is in the same for both field and box. Sorry, we'll continue on this video. And again, you know, it doesn't matter where the ball is, whether it's moving from the top or from below or coming down northwest or east, uh, sorry, north-south or east-west, uh, I'm still trying to hold my ground as long as possible. All right, and, the, and you see there before the shot, you know, I took that step out, but I really didn't move my upper body and, and held my ground as long as possible to give myself the best chance to make that save. Couple more clips here, we'll move on. So again, as you see, that's a great view just because of how the camera angle is. You can see like um, the shooter is in a great shooting spot and he drops his stick and I really try to hold my position as long as possible. Cause I know that if I dip, you know, playing at a level like this, a team like this, if I dip at all, they're going to expose me and start to, to shoot uh, over my shoulder. So I really try to hold, hold my ground as much as possible there. Hold my ground as much as possible there, right? And not react to the, to the ball until the ball is actually being shot at me. All right, um, and then another one, uh, I think the, the box game really helps with my field game, especially is inside saves. And the reason for that is, um, you know, in the, in the box game, you, there's a much higher volume of shots, right? You, you see uh, much more shots from 10 and in than you do from 10 and out, right? Uh, in, the, in the indoor game, you know, obviously um, with the smaller net, the bigger equipment, it, shooters aren't gonna be as inclined to take those outside shots. And so you really need to focus on, on working on those, those inside saves. And again, it comes down to, to stripping down the to position to, to its bare bones and coming uh, and working on just holding your ground, uh, building yourself into essentially a wall and using that equipment to, to your advantage. Um, and that's exactly what I'm working with with my goalies right now in the field game is, you know, we call those bonus saves, the, the six and in shots. Um, if we can save, a few of those, those are bonuses, and they're just going to create momentum for our, for our team, right? They're, those inside shots, you're really not expected to make those saves in the field game, especially when um, good save percentages in college are in the mid-50s, right? And I think even in, the, in pro, the Blaze Riordan last year with the, P, with the chaos was the goalie of the year in the PLL, and I think his save percentage was right around 55%. Same thing with um, the, the MLL goalie of the year. His name is, is, I'm drawing a blank right now, but he played for the Dallas Rattlers and he was right around that 55 to 57%. So, you know, when you're making, a, you're only stopping the ball half, half the time and then probably significantly less on the inside, you know, it comes down to, to playing as big as possible, you know, finding that stance, holding your ground and really making a save however you can, right? You're not always going to make those inside saves with your sticks, although, although that is the ultimate goal. Um, you're really going to use any body part you can. And that comes back from the box game where, you know, you're, you're using your elbows and your shoulders and your legs to make those saves. Um, those same traits tra uh, transfer over to, to the field game as well. So question just kind of pumped in. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that goalie's last name. I know you're talking about Sean, Sean Scannone or Scannone. Yeah. Sean Scannone. Yeah. Yeah. Or Scannone. Yeah. Um, 
So the question was, if you're comfortable wearing the much safer amount of equipment in box, why not wear more protection in field? <laughs> I have no idea. And I love that question. Um, I, I would assume that, you know, I don't know the, 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 the in-depth history of the goaltending position in field lacrosse, but, you know, back when uh, the goal, when goalies started to pad up, uh, I'm sure it was back in the day when guys weren't shooting nearly as hard. And, and as the game has kind of evolved, I think the goaltender position has kind of just stayed the same. And although guys shoot much harder now than they, than they once did, just with technology alone and, and the training that guys do, uh, I just don't think that the goalie position evolved like the, the other positions. Obviously, the chest protectors are much, uh, much safer and the gloves are much safer. But I, I don't know why um, the, there hasn't been more protection added on to the, to the field game. Yeah, and I, I, it was almost something I noticed in Israel because you were one of the few guys that actually stuck with track pants when we yeah. were experiencing the forty degree heat and humidity and whatnot. And uh, I remember one of my one of my young guys kind of asked me like, "Why why is he still wearing that?" And I said, "Well, it does offer some sort of protection. You know, it's a little bit softer." I yeah, see. and honestly, that's kind of the reason why I wear it is it's more of a mental thing. And it's the same reason why I wear uh, the long sleeves too is, you know, the ball, lacrosse ball is hard and it's going to hurt when you get hit. And if I can mentally um, make myself feel like even though I'm just wearing a, a, a thin piece of material over my arm, if I mentally think that that's going to protect me a little bit more, then I'm going to use it. And, uh, you know, that, that's the thing with the, the goaltender position is, yes, you need to be able to you have a high thresh, uh, pain threshold because you're going to get hit with the ball. But if you can give yourself a mental advantage one way or the other, you know, for me, it's wearing a long sleeve and, and pants, regardless of what the temperature is, is going to give me that, that mental edge to, to think that the ball isn't going to hurt as much as it actually will. Yeah. And I, I relate that because we have, uh, I, I coached down in New Jersey and I had a, a young man who was playing net for me. Oh, I'll give him, give him his name up here, but it's Gib Versfeld, who was a starting goalie for Amherst college last year. Right. Um, and, and he went in, he went in, tried net and box. And I, we were kind of relaying some different information to him, but he, it was kind of interesting because I asked him if he was comfortable. I, I went through kind of the process of, you know, being a field goalie to a box goalie and some of the translatables that I had known. Um, but it, he, he wore track pants and he wore some other stuff. And I, I said, why do you do that in field? And it was very much the same, same answer. And he said, if I can just give myself that mental edge, he goes, I don't want to wear more cumbersome equipment because I feel like it's overkill for the one or two times that I'm actually going to get hit. Right. You know, and that was and a high that, school kid at the time. Yeah. And that, you know, that's also the way I coach my the young guys, like the youth kids that I, that I work with now is, you know, the last thing you want, is a goalie is afraid of the ball. And, um, you know, you just don't want to discourage kids in general. So the one thing that I tell these kids is, like, if you aren't comfortable getting hit with the ball yet, at, wear equipment where you feel safe. So um, I, I uh, tell these kids, if you feel like you need to wear shin pads or you feel like you need to wear something on your shoulders or, or elbows or whatever, you know, pad up until you feel comfortable um, taking the, that equipment off because the last thing you want is someone to jump in cage, get scarred right away. And then, you know, it's going to be much harder for them to, to get used to getting hit with that ball or, or facing those uh, shots over and over again with virtually no equipment on. Right. So next, next question come in and I, I can't remember the, do you have a footwork slide after this? Uh, I do not. Okay. So, all right. So the question was, and you know what, Grady Breen, this is coming from Grady. So, Little backstory: Brady did or Grady did the film work for us. He was the one that did the highlights and stuff for for Dylan's presentation today. So, Grady, thank you. Quick shout out: He's um, the operator of the Paint Lax uh, Twitter account and does a great job with the software there. But his question was: How do you respond to a goalie who thinks playing box will change his footwork and field? Well, I think it just goes back to what what I just showed in those clips, and then in terms of you know we'll go back to the box game. The box video here is as we watch it, they're very similar. The arcs are very similar. Yes, I, I take that step out and uh, to cut down the angle, but I'm still um, 
playing a very similar arc as I am in the, in the field game. And when I do react to make those saves, my feet or my footwork is very similar as well. You know, I might not be taking the, the double step like you do, you see more often in, uh, in, in the field game. And what I mean there is, you know, you, you lead with your front leg and then you follow up with your back. You know, you might not see that as much, but in terms of my footwork in my stance in general and my movements, you know, they are very similar um, in, from the box game to the field game. Okay. And, yeah. And, and same thing. I had, I had a discussion with, with one of my goalies and we were talking about the same sort of translatables for Israel. And I said, Hey, if it actually changes your footwork and challenges you to be a better goalie, like, so be it. But at, at the same time, it's not that far off of a difference. Right. No, I completely agree with that. Yeah. All right. Well, we're, we're looking clear on the Q&A right now. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So the next thing, uh, uh, communication. And um, obviously in the field across game, it's, uh, you know, as a goaltender, you are much more uh, of a communicator than you are in the box game. You know, in the, in the field game, you're essentially a quarterback. You can see the whole offense. You can see the whole field. So you're in charge of directing the defense to be in the slide package that you're, you're supposed to be in, who's going to be the hot guy, who's going to be um, the two slide, the fills, like you, you are orchestrating what is going to happen in the defense. Um, and I think as a Canadian goalie growing up uh, playing box first, you know, I didn't, there wasn't much communication as a goalie. It's more, more or less, you know, throw you back there and, and stop the ball, right? That's your only, the, your only focus. And then growing up coming into the field game, you know, since I wasn't doing doing or communicating during the play in the box game, I really didn't communicate in the field game either until I got up into high school and played my first few game first, got my first taste of field lacrosse down in the States. And you could hear goalies communicating everything, whether it was, you know, a check call um, where he wants his defender to push him, push a guy. Um, they communicate literally everything. And um, you know, that I, I took that, personally and wanted to add that to my game and I think I did a good job doing that adding that to the field game but that also translates over to the box game as well um, you know you're not going to obviously be standing there in the box game and communicating as much as a field goalie but it, it does add in, in in that communication aspect to the game you know when there's a loose ball I'll communicate with guys if uh, you know if one of our D guys gets lost in uh, say a pick or, or someone back uh, back doors them you know I can communicate that if um, you know, I have something to say uh, in a transition, whether I want the guy to shoot or I want uh, you to jump him to force him to pass it to the, to the other guy on, the, on a fast break, something like that. You know, I, I will communicate that stuff during the box game. And I think that's something that the field game really translates over to the box game and has helped my box game uh, considerably as well. So, Dylan, one of the questions, and it comes down to communication as well. Uh, obviously, vision is a huge huge tool um but do you use any different tricks for tracking the ball in the box game that are different from field or vice versa i mean um, you're a tall goalie yeah and, and i i know that helps but you know the 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 tracking mechanism it, there's so many variables that come into play between the two disciplines right and i think i honestly i've never really been asked this question before so i'm kind of just going off the cuff here or the cusp, whatever, whatever that uh, term is. But, uh, you know, I've never really been asked that question, but I think just right off the top of my head, um, when I'm uh, tracking the ball in box, there's so much more going on. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously dialed in on the ball and focused on the ball, but I'm much more aware of what's going on off ball as well. Like I said, there's a lot more East West ball movement and uh, I just need to know where guys are on the floor. Um, whereas in field lacrosse, you know, it's much more uh, north-south dodge. You know, the, the ball carrier holds onto the ball for a much extended, more extended period of time. So you don't really need to be as – you still need to know where guys are, but you don't need to be as dialed in to the off-ball guys as you would be in the box game. So I think those, that would be like the major difference between my uh, focus um, in the box game compared to the field game. Okay. Awesome. Um, and then lastly, I'm just going to so touch on 
uh, getting, you know, a field goalie comfortable playing box. And I, like I said, I work with young, young goalies all the time who are predominantly field goalies. And the, 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 the hardest thing for these kids is to get used to getting hit with the ball. And, you know, that's just because in the field game, obviously we're taught to catch the ball and, you know, essentially not get hit. And obviously you do, you get hit every once in a while playing field across, but again, you have that stick to, to track the ball with and, and, and corral it in before it hits you where as in box, you're, you're more of a blocker and you use that equipment to your advantage. And the one thing that, you know, I find is kids get, get nervous with that. And, you know, rightfully so they're not used to getting hit with the ball over and over and over again. So one thing that I actually do a ton with the, my young goalies, if I see them flinching or turning is first off, I'll talk to them about the, the chest protector itself. And I'll ask them what the chest protector is covering, where the equipment is, right? And that is obviously your chest and your stomach, the front and your arms. And if you, and then the next thing I'll, I'll say is like, since you're flinching and you're turning towards the ball, you know, what kind of padding do you have on the sides? And I'll poke at soft spots, like in the armpit and uh, on their back, you know, if they're twisting a lot above behind their shoulders, something like that. And like, if you get hit with a ball right here, what's that going to feel like? Or if you get hit with a ball right here, what's that going to feel like? You know, and then obviously right away, the goalies are going to be like, that's going to hurt. Right. So I, I reiterate to them that your equipment is on the front of your body, right? If you turn, right? You might be scared to get hit. That's okay. But if you turn, you're putting yourself in danger to get hit and get hurt playing, playing the game. So I'll talk to them about that first. And then I'll actually just have them stand in the goal. They don't even need to be in their stance and just tell them don't move. And I'll just pick up five balls and hit them right in the chest five times. So that's just to get them more comfortable with getting hit, right? And I, I, I won't shoot incredibly hard, but I'll shoot hard enough where, you know, it would hurt if you, if you weren't wearing equipment on. And then I'll ask them after each shot, did that hurt? Do it, do it again. Did that hurt? Do it again. And do that five or six times, right? Just to get them thinking like, okay, this equipment is on to protect me. I don't need to flinch and turn away from the ball um, because, you know, then I open myself up to being more vulnerable. That's the, that's the main thing. Uh, and obviously, obviously, it's probably the safest, uh, biggest safety concern uh, for a field goalie jumping into the box game. Um, second is, you know, making sure they keep their stick on the ground. Obviously it's a big transition going from the field game, having your stick up top to holding it down, uh, below, but by your feet. And, um, the, the way I, I teach or work with these field goalies is I'll, I'll tell them to put the stick on the ground without them holding it, get into their stance and just have it resting against their leg pad or up uh, towards their chest. And then I'll, I'll sorry, I'll, so I'll tell them to get into their stance and then I'll say, grab your stick. And where they grab that stick, whether it's right by the throat of the head or if it's a little bit up on the shaft, it's like, all right, that's where you want to hold your stick. Because you see a lot of kids come in and grab their stick right on that throat of where the shaft and the head meet. And obviously that works for some people, but sometimes for a lot of goalies, you know, if you hold your stick that low, your shoulders are tilted and you're just not square. So you just want to get them comfortable uh, and holding, uh, holding their stick. And then I'll obviously, you know, I'll put a little tape on there so that they have a reminder of that's where they want to hold their stick. Um, uh, the other thing is, you know, I'm, instead of hold, having two hands on their stick, they're only going to have one. And what to do with that, that offhand. Another thing that a problem that I have uh, with goal, young goalies or new goalies in the box game is they'll try to catch the ball or they'll use their glove like a catcher in, in hockey. And obviously that's not safe. So again, a uh, similar kind of thing. I'll have them put their hand right on their hip and ha have their hands facing forward. And again, I'll hit them in the hand a couple of times, not crazy hard, maybe a little less than I would for the shoulder pad and just show them like, look, the, the glove is there for protection. And uh, if you start to turn and try to catch it, you're going to open yourself to all sorts of injuries, like breaking your hand or spraining your wrist or, you know, bad bruises, just stuff you don't want to deal with. So that's one way that I, uh, I'll, I'll um, help them kind of get used to that. And then uh, the last thing is just moving in the equipment. Um, needless to say, you know, guys aren't used to moving in big box equipment because they're used to wearing the small um, goalie, goalie gear that they're used to in field. So uh, just moving the equipment in general and what I'll do, it's, it's pretty funny. It, it takes a while for these kids to get used to as I'll actually just have them run from side to side on a, on a box floor and just get, get them to, to, to run and move around and just get used to simply moving in that equipment. 
and then I'll have them do exaggerated movements like the, the, the chicken wings, whatever you want to call it, and just have them moving their shoulders back and forth just so that they, again, are, are used to, to moving it. And then the biggest thing is getting them used to throwing with all that equipment. A great drill that I love to do is uh, I'll just start about five feet away. Um, I don't even need to roll a ball, and I'll just have a, uh, a few balls in the goalie's crease, and he'll just work on simply picking the ball up and passing it to me. You know, as they get comfortable um, at each uh, point, I'll, I'll take a few steps back, and then we'll just get farther and farther and farther until, um, you know, uh, you see fit, really. And this is just such a big part of the game because one thing that kind of – uh, that I that I don't love about the uh, you know the the box game being played. Uh, no, I don't want to say in the in the U.S. because there are goalies who can throw the ball great, but I feel like it's a trait that really isn't worked on that that much. And and you really want to see these goalies be able to move the ball and not just have to rely on their defender or their teammates coming into the crease and dropping the ball into their stick. You know, you really want these kids to be able to throw the ball. And, uh, you know, a main reason for that is you can spark transition and you can, you can get your offense going from the, from the crease if you can throw the ball. And it just picks up the, the pace of play. It's a great trait to have. And, uh, yeah, those are really the, the biggest things for, for me uh, in terms of just getting field goalies used to playing that box game. Um, and, yeah, that, that's really it to, to wrap up my, my presentation on the, the traits going uh, from box to field and field to box. Um, if there are any questions right now, uh, I'd love to, to, to answer them. I know uh, the box game is very uh, foreign to, to a lot of people, and uh, especially, you know, down, down here in the States where, you know, it's starting to blow up, but, but uh, you know, people just don't really know much about the, the box game, let alone the, the goaltending position. So I'd love to, to answer any, any questions that you guys may have. So got a couple that have already that have filtered in. Um, one of them, you know, how do you think the field goalie position will evolve? And you know what? With the new Olympic rules that are coming in, that might be a very good question. Right. That is a great question. I, I don't know if I have an answer for that right now. Um, I think as guys, the equipment continues to evolve and the athlete continues to evolve and guys just continue to get bigger, faster, stronger and shoot harder and harder. I think at some point goalies are going to have to pad up in some way. You know, I don't think you're going to see a hockey goalie or a box goalie for that matter, size of equipment. But I think at some point goalies are going to have to just pad up in some way or goalies are really going to risk getting, getting injured. But, you know, that's a great question. I haven't put a ton of thought into that. But right off the, off the top of my head, I think, uh, you know, padding up is going to be something that we'll see. Okay. Um, now what are the NLL rules for having extra material on the show? This could be a sensitive subject here for some people. <laughs> what are the NLL rules for having extra material on the shaft? And what do you use to take up that extra space on the five hole? Yeah, so we're allowed to have two inches across. So um, what I do is I use um, pre-wrap that, you know, obviously all trainers have. And I'll just slide full rolls of pre-wrap on there. I use four. So I'll slide four rolls of pre-wrap on there and then I'll tight it, uh, tape it really tight with electrical tape, which brings it in um, and gets me to just under two inches. And then I'll put a layer of hockey tape on top of that. And then uh, up right above those four rolls of pre-wrap, I will uh, create my grip, which again, I use uh, hockey tape for. Okay. And earlier you had mentioned uh, two sticks, one for field, one for box. Yeah. Is there any pocket differentiation between those sticks? Yeah, there is. So the, my box uh, goalie stick, I actually use uh, East Coast Dyes uh, Wax Mesh. And um, I, I just love the way that it absorbs rebounds. And uh, I'm able to, to get the ball off really quickly. Obviously, with the, the box game, uh, I, I, or I guess it's not obvious, but in my, with my box stick, I have a much more shallow pocket just so I can get those passes off a little bit quicker. Um, and since I have wax mesh, I can kind of get away with that smaller, smaller pocket because it, it absorbs the rebounds. And uh, since I don't have that, that same range of motion as I do with, in the field game, I have that smaller pocket, so I don't have to worry about uh, having to get a big wind up and I can get that pass off quick and, uh, and accurately. And then the field game, I use a, a bigger, I, don't, I wouldn't say a huge bag, but a bigger pocket. Um, I actually use the um, Trevor Tierney pocket I guess is, is what it's called and uh, you know you'll see it a lot of guys using it especially in Colorado it's just one nylon across or sorry one shooter across 
uh, and a U. Uh, and you can find that pattern uh, basically any, uh, anywhere on the internet. Okay. Um, so what are some tips that you'd have for younger players who are looking to play some box school tennis other than jump in the net? <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, obviously you want to try and get your hands on, on uh, proper equipment and um, you know, you don't, you don't have to rush into it. You know, I think the, the best way to, to kind of get used to it, it would be just playing in the backyard with a couple buddies and again, have them just shoot the ball at you from pretty close range, right at your chest to get used to getting hit with the ball. And then, um, you know, just, just work on moving around uh, in the goal with that equipment. Right. And, and like, like I said, the, the biggest, one of the biggest things for, for the, these new goalies that I see that I've worked with that are generally field goalies is they have a big tendency to keep, bring that stick off the ground. So really work on keeping that stick on the ground uh, and making those saves um, in the cage. Whereas, you know, again, I see with a lot of the, the field goalies is they'll, they always, uh, they have a tendency to, to, to spring up because, you know, the field net is so much bigger. So just work on trying to make those saves uh, down in the, in the cage work on uh, or uh, get used to getting hit with the ball and just work on, on moving around in the cage with all that equipment on. Okay. Awesome. Now, um, it was great. Some of, we've got good questions rolling in here. So how difficult is it for you to readjust between uh, field and box and what are the most difficult aspects? Cause I, I guess, I mean, at the end of the, end of the NLL season and start of the uh, your PLL, there, there would have been a bit of overlap. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a great question. And, uh, something that was, you know, much more difficult when, um, I was in, in college and I, I would say it would take me about two, three weeks to, to get back into a field, um, mode, I would say from, from box, because I was generally coming back right from my box playoffs. Uh, and then I would jump right into fall ball. And it's just, again, it's just, there's different motions. Although there are some similarities, you know, the stance isn't a lot different. The movements aren't a lot different. There are those different movements in terms of the box. I'm more of a blocker and trying to, to use my body to stop the ball. Whereas in field, I just have, I'm using my stick and trying to track the ball and catch it um, rather than using my body. So that's the biggest difference is, is just getting used to having your stick up by your ear and, and uh, catching the ball rather than, being holding your ground, using your your body and, and blocking the ball. Right. I mean, going back from from you know, if you're at home playing in the summer and going back to college, you, know, you the volume of shots specifically yourself and, and the Orangeville organization, like you guys traditionally make a pretty decent run in the playoffs. And you know, you'd be facing a volume of shots of anywhere from fifty to sixty shots every other night for almost two months. And right. you, you don't get that volume in field without practice. Right. Right. So um, the next question is, how do you get comfortable as a field goalie when you start out as a box goalie? Yeah. So again, that, uh, that's, uh, that just comes down to, you know, obviously the question is getting comfortable with it. You know, that's kind of the answer too, just getting comfortable in that field net. And, you know, um, like I said, I, I tell my young goalies that if they're not, comfortable um not wearing equipment or or you know extra padding don't take it off until you're ready to 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 take that next step right? or lose some padding right um you know i i had the same transition i i started off as a box goalie played like two or three years uh box goalie before i i played field and to be honest um when i first played field there really wasn't much of it in canada there was a handful of guys who had gone on to play in the states uh, YouTube, I don't even know if YouTube existed yet. So there really wasn't a bunch of video or, or games on TV or anything. So I had no idea what field goalies wore. So I actually went out for my first practice with my box equipment on. Um, and, and then it, I didn't really find out uh, until, you know, I was leaving and the older kids were coming out and they told me like what field goalies wear. And then even then, uh, I probably, I wore a hockey goalie upper body pad, which is obviously a little bit smaller and uh, I could move a lot better and hockey shin pads for probably my first two years of, uh, of playing field lacrosse goalie. And then after that, I, tra I transitioned into wearing a field chest protector specific when I was probably in sixth or seventh grade. And then I still wore shin pads, uh, soccer shin pads up until I think my ninth grade. 
So again, it's just, you know, you, you just got to build pictures? towards getting used to getting hit with that ball. Is, is there pictures of that? I'd love to see out there with full box gear on. I have no idea. If there are, they, they wouldn't be on uh, the internet anywhere, but I, I have no idea. So this is a positional question. Field game, why do most go- goalies face the ball carrier at X? Um, yeah, that's a great question too. And I think it just has uh, more to do with uh, being able to pick off the pick off passes, uh, and uh, again, uh, communicating to to your goal to your sorry your defense. Um, obviously, in the box game, it, it you have much more equipment on. The sh- shots are coming from much uh, tighter inside. So if you were to turn around, it's first. It's going to take you a lot longer to uh, react back to the ball. And, and secondly, uh, the shots from so tight that you know by the time you do react back, you know the ball is probably already in the net. Whereas in field across. You know, yes, um, X attackmen can hit inside guys for those quick one touches. But again, you don't have that equipment on, so it's much easier to to get that turn in and get set uh, and make that save. And also, a lot of the times they'll just feed it off to the wings, so you have a much longer time to to turn, get set, and and track that ball. Um, so I think it just has to do with you know goaltending. Not goalies not wearing as much equipment. You're being. It's much more. Uh, simple to, to move around and then that aspect of being able to pick off passes. Okay. Um, uh, this is from a, a prospect type question or scenario is, you know, would you recommend using a Woody over the summer if you're working to play in the NLL? Um, I mean, the- you know, I do, I do have some thoughts on the Woody in general, but yes, I would. If you, if you're allowed to use the Woody, I would say, yes, use the Woody. Um, it does take a while to get used to that plastic stick again. Um, when you do, if you do end up making it to the NLL or a league where you're not allowed to, to use the wooden stick, uh, I personally would love to see more uniform rules trickle down from the NLL to minor lacrosse. But at the same time, you know, there's obviously a ton of heritage in the, in the, in the world of lacrosse and lacrosse in general. And the wooden sticks are, are obviously, you know, really cool in the way that they're made and and um you know i I, a huge part of the game especially in the summer but you know if you have the opportunity to use the wooden stick or they're allowed in your in your league that you're playing in i would say yes just because if you don't use that or the bigger stick you're you put your team at just such a a disadvantage Uh, all right this is a this is a great question so somebody mutual friend here but Who's the better dual field box goalie from the ECAC, Dylan Ward or Evan Kirk? <laughs> well, Evan Kirk was someone I looked up to my uh, my uh, face in my whole uh, younger life, right? Uh, he's from the same hometown as me. Uh, we played in the same minor program uh, all the way up. He's uh, four four year four or five years older than me, and someone I really he's really one of the reasons why I decided to play field goalie and box goalie because I saw him do it at such a high level. Uh, he, he, uh, you know, was the one who kind of pointed me in that direction. So he's, he's done it. He did a really good job in the box game and the field game as well. Okay. Um, now there's a question from Hugo. Hugo, I need you to rephrase that question because I'm not quite sure I understand it, but, um, I'm going to take a shot at interpreting it and send it off to, to Dylan. But, you know, there's, there's, there's agile goalies and there's, there's goalies who are more, you know, I use two Orangeville goalies comparison, you know, um, Nick Rose yourself. Mm-hmm. What's, what's the differences between you and what, I mean, the similarities I know, but I've had the luxury of seeing you guys grow up. Yeah. And uh, again, it just, it, it goes uh, back to, you know, everyone has a different style in really anything you do, right. You're not, not everyone is the same basketball player. Not everyone has the same, uh, shooting stroke for hockey or the same golf swing for, for golf, right? It just comes down to, to uh, you know, how, uh, um, you know, in your individual style. And, you know, just to kind of break it down quickly, uh, Nick Rose is, is obviously a bigger guy. He, he's more of a blocker and a positional player. And he does an incredible job of uh, putting himself in a position and holding his ground and making shooters shoot around him. And if you don't hit your spot perfectly, he's going to gobble those uh, shots up. Whereas myself, you know, I'm a little bit uh, taller and, and skinnier. Um, I've got to be a bit more of a reactionary goalie. So I try to, to play as positionally sound as Rosie uh, in terms of holding my ground. But the fact is, is that if I don't move a little bit more, 
I'm just I'm going to get picked on um, from these these great NLL shooters. So I would be a little bit more of a reactionary goalie, where where Rosie would be more of a, a blocker, uh, stand your ground type of goalie. Yeah, and I mean from a coach's perspective, it's a nightmare trying to go into you know Oakville on a Monday night when when my Brooklyn team's in town and preparing a scouting report on what we should do, knowing that on Tuesday or Wednesday I'm facing Six Nations. And, you know, I've got yourself and Dougie Jamison that we have to prepare for. So it also kind of throws that in because you've got, you've got guys on each team that are trying to figure out, you know, the quote unquote goalie book. Um, Yeah. You know, and then there's just so many variables that that can come into play. And now you're seeing uh, defenses built around goalies rather than, you know, uh, goalies having to to play around the defense that that the, the team's playing. So a lot of like a team like Oakville, um, with Rosie, who's more of a blocker, just, you know, they'll pack it in, uh, force you to kind of shoot from those uh, outside shots where he can just hold his ground, take that big step out, and he's going to uh, eat up most of those. Um, you got a recommendation on where a good wooden goalie stick can can come from, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but they can be well, customized, yeah, right? I've got to say uh, Sanderson Source for Sports in Orangeville, and then, uh, you know, obviously uh, the Iroquois, the Cross Arena has a, has a store in the in the arena, and they've got some uh, great wooden sticks too. So, um, no. and then Lack Shack, doesn't Lack Shack carry uh, carry them as well? Yeah, they do. You know what? I think the question's more towards the manufacturer, though. And to uh, it's getting cut off at the bottom. I got to try and pull this up, but yeah, they're asking yeah, yeah. if it can be made based on stance and positioning. So, they, can they be customized? Yeah, so you can get uh, a left-handed stick and a right-handed stick. And then, obviously, wooden sticks in general are, you know, they're all, they're all different. That's the, the beauty of the, the handmade stick is that, you know, not, not two are going to be the same. It's like a snowflake. So you really just got to play around with it a little bit. You know, a wooden stick is harder to order online or not being there just because they do lie different and they do have different balances. So that's, you know, if you are going to order a wooden stick, that's something that you kind of – you would route – I would definitely prefer doing it in person so I can just feel how it, stand, uh, how it lays uh, in my stance and then how it balances when uh, I have a ball in my stick. But uh, in terms of a, a brand, you know, obviously I, I, I honestly don't know what brand of, of stick I uh, wouldn't stick that I have right now. I think, I don't know if it's Mohawk. I, it might be Mitchell Brothers, but you know, there's, a, there's some good brands out there. They, they, make, they, they make really good wooden sticks. Yeah. Um, now, for, for the person who asked that question, I would say Aqua Sosni and traditional lacrosse is probably your closest um, to to go see. And uh, Dylan's right. I mean, I, I have several wooden sticks as an out player. I, I mean, I quit using them when I started playing in the NLL, but the, the customization of a stick, it, it's more based on the feel. And I remember going into shops and picking up four or five, six, seven different sticks before the one that I had actually felt right. Um, you know, but, but I played out, so I can't imagine as a goalie, I mean, and it's a bigger investment because the costs are a little bit more. Okay. Um, well, we're done. We're approaching that hour here. I don't, uh, I don't see any more questions coming in just yet. We'll give it another minute just to see if anyone fires one in. Sounds um, good. But I wanted to thank you for coming on and, and sharing this knowledge with us. It's, uh, um, you know, it's always nice to see pro guys, you know, stepping out, sharing some knowledge. Uh, you've got some great experience. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, this summer, this, this tournament, um, what, what's this going to look like for, for Dylan Ward here in, in July? Yeah, I'm excited. You know, um, obviously it's set up more like a, a world championship, which, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to do three, three different times with the, the box team this past fall. And then the, the, outdoor team in 18 and 14. So I think, you know, if you look up and down our roster full of Canadians and a lot of guys who have played on, uh, on these uh, national teams, I think we have a, a team that is, is uh, set up really well to make a nice little run at this thing. And, um, you know, guys are just, you know, their, their bodies are, are, are know what it's going to take and, you know, know what uh, you're going to have to do to prepare for it and know how to react to it once, uh, once you're there. So I, I, I love our roster to, to kind of make a run at this thing. So with society the way it is right now, um, you've got a month and a bit. What, um, what are you doing to prepare? What can you do? Yeah, so I'm fortunate enough here in Denver that my uh, gym that I work at 
uh, work out at uh, with the Colorado Mammoth trainers is actually open. So I'm able to, to get in and uh, get PT done there and uh, get my lifts in there as well. And then, um, you know, I'm watching a ton of film. I've actually got access to all my, uh, the chaos PLL games from last year. I'm watching my own film with the outlaws from last year as well. And then, uh, you know, just getting my stick in my hands as much as I can. Obviously it's tough to, to really get organized shoot shoots going, but you know, I'm getting my stick in my hands and, and, and throwing the ball around as much as I can and, and getting those workouts in to, to make sure that my body is, is, uh, ready for, for those three weeks. Awesome. Um, you know what, Dylan, thanks a lot. I, I, I don't see any more coming in and we promised an hour. I appreciate you taking your time. Um, we are going to end this, uh, for everybody that's out there. Thanks for tuning in. We're back tomorrow at, uh, at 12 o'clock and I don't have the schedule in front of me. I don't know who's up, but <laughs> check, check our schedule. We've got a good lineup. Um, Dylan, thanks again for coming on. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Okay. Take care. You too. Bye.